Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be a continuation of our series on stock market terms for beginners. And if you haven't seen the previous two videos, I'll link those in the upper right corner of the screen now so you can view those. So today's video is going to be a little bit different in that what we're going to do is we're going to look at the Yahoo Finance page. We're going to pull up a stock. In this case, it's going to be Apple stock. And we're going to view the information that's on there. And I'll explain to you what each of those terms that they give you on that page are. So let's get right into that. Okay, everyone, so we're on the Yahoo Finance page, and this is a screenshot that I took um, during yesterday's trading day. This is the page for Apple Incorporated. Um, and the first thing you're gonna see, of course, is the company's name. And next to that, you're gonna see uh, in brackets the company's ticker symbol. And if you don't know what a ticker symbol is, it's basically just an abbreviated uh, unique identifier for shares of a public company. In this case, Apple is AAPL. But don't worry if you don't know what a company's ticker symbol is. If you type the company name into the search window, chances are you'll be able to find the ticker symbol quite easily through there. Um, just below that, you can see what market this stock is trading on. And in this case, Apple is trading on the NASDAQ. And the NASDAQ is known as American technology company um, market. So you'll, chances are if you're looking for a technology stock in the US, it's going to be trading on the NASDAQ. And it tells you that they, it's a real-time price, uh, but usually it's delayed slightly by a minute or two. Uh, and it tells you that the currency um, is in US dollars. Okay, so just below that information, you're going to see the current price per share that the stock is trading at in giant numbers. And uh, it's in giant numbers, obviously, because this is the single biggest piece of information that people are looking for when they pull up a stock on Yahoo Finance. Um, just next to that, you're going to see in dollars how much it's changed since market opened that day so in this case it's a dollar 82 increase and that's why it's in green uh, on yahoo finance and most financial websites you'll see it indicated in green if the price has gone up or red if the price has gone down and in brackets next to that you can see the percentage change okay so let's look at the stock summary itself and that's this middle portion of the website here that has all these various pieces of information in it we're going to go through each item and uh, explain what it is. And I'm not going to go into huge amounts of detail just because it would make the video too long. But hopefully it gives you a good idea of what each item is and what it means. Okay, so the previous close, that's the price per share that the stock was trading at the end of the previous market day. So if you don't know, uh, most markets are open Monday to Friday, uh, except for holidays, of course. And the markets usually open at about 6.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time and close at about 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Okay, so the next item down on the list is open. And that is the price per share that the stock was trading at at the beginning of the current trading day. And so you might be wondering why that's different than the previous close price. The reason for that is we have uh, what's called post-market trading or after-hours trading. We also have pre-market trading, and most people don't have access to that, but there is trading that goes on after the market is closed and just before the market opens for the current day. So that sometimes can make the price per share be quite a bit different than what it closed at. Okay, so the next item we have on the list is bid. And bid is the highest price that currently has an order set up to purchase. Uh, that someone is willing to pay for the stock and the number of stocks that they're willing to buy at that price. In this case, we're looking at $175.06 for up to 900 shares of Apple stock. The item just below that is ask. And ask is the cheapest that someone is willing to sell the stock for and the number of shares of stock that they're willing to sell at that price. In this case, it's $175.12 for 800 shares of Apple stock. Just below that, we have what's called day's range. And this is the price per share that the stock has traded, out th has traded at throughout the current trading day. So the cheapest that it was trading at in this day was $172.89. And the most expensive it was trading at was $175.14. Just below that, we have 52 week range. And this is basically the same as day's range, except for it's, of course, over the last year. So the cheapest that the stock traded at in the last year, or 52 weeks, was 
and the most that it traded at in the last year was $233.47. This is a particularly interesting item as it can show you basically where the stock was trading at throughout the year. So it gives you a good indication where it's at now. Okay, so next we have volume and volume is the number of shares that have traded hands in the current trading day. So shares that have either been bought or sold in the current trading day. Next down on the list, we have average volume, which is the average number of shares that trade hands in any given regular trading day. Uh, that gives you a good idea of how many shares trade hands in a usual trading day. So you can compare that against the current volume to figure out if either a lot of shares have been traded in that day or not very many have been traded in that day. Okay, so next we have market cap or market capitalization. So in the news, you'll often hear them refer to how much a company is worth. And when they say that, they're referring to market cap. Um, this is basically the price per share times the number of shares that company has outstanding. Uh, so in recent news, we've heard that uh, Apple was worth over a trillion dollars. Uh, you can see now that it's worth much less than that uh, because the price per share has gone down. But that's what they're referring to when they say that the company is worth over a trillion, that market capitalization number. Just below that, we have uh, beta. And beta is a indicator that will tell you how volatile a stock is. And I haven't personally found this information very useful so far. Uh, but basically, the gist is that a lower number means the stock will be less volatile and a higher number meaning that the stock is more volatile. Okay, so next we have the price to earnings ratio or the P.E. ratio. And you can see next to that it has in brackets TTM, which stands for trailing 12 months. So this is calculated using the last year's earnings data. Um, it's calculated by taking the current share price and dividing it by the earnings per share for the last year. Um, this is often used by people to value stocks. So I'm not going to go into great detail about how that works because I'm going to be making an upcoming video on that. Um, but just know that that's used quite often by people to value stocks. Um, you, you really want to have a low P.E. ratio. Um, the current average on the S&P 500 is around 21, so anything below that is considered um, to be better. Um, a high P.E. ratio may indicate that a stock is overvalued, and a low P.E. ratio may indicate that a stock is undervalued. And I say may because there's also many other factors that have to go into valuing a stock, uh, but that's, that may be an indication one way or the other. Okay, next we have earnings per share or EPS and again we have in brackets TTM so we're looking at the trailing 12 months. So this is calculated by taking the company's earnings over the last year and just dividing that by the total number of shares and that gives you the EPS value. Um, this is an indication of how healthy a company is, how profitable a company is. Obviously if the higher the number the better. Um, and if the number is zero or negative, the company is losing money. So that's a good indicator to see how healthy the company is. Okay, so next we have earnings date. And this is the range of dates for roughly when the company will issue its next quarterly earnings report. Uh, if you didn't know, every public company is required to release a quarterly earnings report. Um, and that basically just breaks down all their activities for the prior quarter and they usually have a telephone call and a earnings letter that they release at that time. Uh, people like to keep track of this because uh, the stock price can generally shift quite a bit either up or down based on what this report has to say. Okay, so next we have forward dividend and yield and I talked a lot about dividends in my previous video so I'll link that in the upper right corner of the video now and you can check it out if you want to. Uh, but forward dividend is basically what the an estimate of what the company is expected to pay out per share as a dividend over the next year. Um, and in brackets there we have that value expressed as a percentage of the current stock price. Uh, so you can use this to get a quick indication of how much money you'll make back and then what percentage you'll make back just on dividends if you're purchasing a dividend stock. Just below that we have ex-dividend date, which is the date that you need to own the stock by in order to get the next payable dividend. And finally we have at the bottom here the one-year target estimated. So that's basically 
a group of analysts have gotten together and decided that uh, $178.49 is currently what they think the stock, Apple stock, is going to be worth one year from now. So the one year estimated target is that just that it's an estimated target. So often analysts will have widely varying opinions on a stock. So you should do your own research, make sure that you come to your own conclusions. Well, this has been my video breaking down a stock summary and hopefully it's helped you understand the terms that are used on it a lot better. If it has, please consider subscribing and comment down below if there are terms that I haven't yet covered that you're interested in knowing. Uh, I'll see you guys on the next video.